Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's talk is given by Kevin Haesong Sheridan. Uh, talk tonight is on compassion during the holiday times, and maybe all times. <coughs> and uh, forgive me, I had a time for a little coughing. I'm just getting over some COVID. So happy holidays to all here and those that are and will be listening. I wish you all the best during these times of celebration and festivities. These times, like all times, are unique to the individuals experiencing them. Many are very fortunate and are surrounded by family that they are close to and have positive and loving intimate relationships with. Others are reminded of the chasms that separate them from those that they are close, but may not now due to a slight or a transgression feel that, you know, something has come between them. And others may have no one to share the holidays with at all, feeling the walls of loneliness encompass them. Therefore, well-being, mindful and compassionate of others' situations is important during these holidays as it really is for all our days when you think about it. As human beings, we all have the potential to be happy and compassionate people. And we have the potential to be miserable and cruel uh, just as well. The possibility for each of these is present within each of us. Each of these can be contagious and cause others change uh, that we meet. How should we handle it then when we find that annoying friend or cousin or aunt or parent that decides to push our buttons at family gatherings, for instance. Maybe one way is to be on guard for it. Knowing the situation could potentially be this way gives you the time to prepare for how you can respond instead of react. For me, there's a distinction between those two things. Responding is mindfulness, whereas reacting comes from a script that's written or been written for us by it. All we're doing is really simply acting it out. Our preparation doesn't mean thinking of a cleverer thing to say ahead of time or humiliating the other person in a one-up game. It simply means to be on guard and to understand that their way does not need to be your way in that moment. It's times like these that I like to remind myself that individuals behaving in such a way are helpful to me to practice my religion of mindfulness and compassion. That's not always easy to do. Yet the only way to put out a world that's on fire is to put out the fire out in yourself first, yes? If we wanna be happy and more importantly promote happiness, then the important thing is to try to encourage the positive and useful aspects in each of us and subdue the negativity. Being negative may occasionally seem to bring us some short-term satisfaction, but in the long run, it will always bring us misery because that's what we're doing. We're endorsing negativity and misery. Utama Buddha has been quoted as saying, we are shaped by our thoughts. We become what we think. When the mind is pure, joy follows like a shadow that never leaves. Positive acts, therefore, always build our inner compassion and strength. And with this inner resilient strength, we have less fear, and more confidence, self-confidence. This is the point that it becomes much easier to extend ourselves of caring to others without barriers, whether personal, religious, cultural, or otherwise. Hence, it is very important to recognize our potential for good and bad, both. And then to observe and examine it cautiously, being mindful that we're doing it for the right reasons and not for self-centered goals. It's my opinion that this is the true power of the heart and mind. Mahatma Gandhi said, power is of two kinds. One is obtained by fear and punishment and the other by acts of love. 
power based on love is a thousand times more effective and permanent than the one derived from fear and punishment. You must be the change you wish to see in the world. Accordingly, compassion and a good heart form the underlying goal of our accomplishment as Buddhists on a spiritual path and a measure of our progress and fulfillment of our spoken aspirations. Our four great bodhisattva vows give us these words. Sentient beings are numberless. We vow to help them all. Illusions are countless. We vow to see through them all. Opportunities to awaken are infinite. We vow to embrace them all. The Buddha way is endless. We vow to embody it. Are they then just words? Or are they an aspiration to put ourselves on the path of? Being human means our own self-interest inhibits our abilities to show kindness for others at times. So <clears throat> can we develop such compassion? Is there a trick? The answer is one moment at a time. Preparing for the moment is the trick. Dalai Lama has spoken on this and said that for true compassion to come out, we need a calm mind. And such peace of mind is brought about only by a compassionate attitude. How can we develop this attitude? Obviously, there's not enough for us to simply believe that compassion is important and to think about how nice it is. We need to make a concerted effort to develop it. We must use all the events of our daily life to transform our thoughts and behavior. Now, since none of us are the Dalai Lama or Gandhi or Buddha or Jesus or Kehl Brown or anyone else that uh, you know, we aspire to be, we are all afflicted at times by the challenge to accomplish this to one degree or another. Of course, our negativity of self-centeredness and attachment to the I want us to cling to the old ways and want to prevent our flow of compassion. But to change, we need to start first with ourselves and give ourselves two main ingredients, patience and time. It takes both of these to cultivate true altruistic compassion, to begin to make spiritual progress. And this starts by knowing and loving ourselves. A good place to start is getting to know ourselves in quiet moments. Many cannot or are afraid to do this. Their minds are too busy or they fear what they will be there for them when they look. Author Andre Moreau stated, men fear silence as they fear solitude because both give them a glimpse of the terror of life's nothingness. I think this is a sad way of looking at things. I believe that we should embrace silence and solitude because both bring us closer to the truth of ourselves and our higher power. Sometimes the shadows are taller than the objects they project off of. But with just a little bit of light, only the object remains. And that's always doable. Hitting the clear button on our Zen calculators, or in other words, meditating, to clear our minds is a great place to start. You may have heard me speak of Zen Master Sung San's primary point and just don't know mind. He described prim primary point as a scale, and there is nothing being weighed. The indicator points to zero. That's the easy part of our lives. Nothing's really interacting with us at that moment. Then you have something put on the scale, and the pointer swings one way or another. For example, one pound. This is the interaction part. But once the something is taken off the scale, and the point is should go back to zero. That's not always the way for many. Even after the one pound of something is removed, the point is still shows one pound. This is the attachment most of us live with. Song San said, though, that after you find your primary point, that point you know you can get back to, and good feelings come, bad feelings come, you point to swings one direction or another. This doesn't matter. Don't check it. 
aka attachment. When the feeling is over with, let the pointer swing back to zero. The Zen meditation that helps break this cycle and allows us to show compassion to those around us, even when their situation is not reflected back to us in kind. As we said a little while ago, to not react, but rather respond to in most moments, by being present in that moment, letting go of attachments to previous beliefs. The key is to remember that in order to know the path, we need not just walk it, we must become the path. Thank you. And may you all have the ability to show, give and receive true love and compassion this holiday season as and always. Pax.